I think no company has a chance without data analytics embedded in their culture. In companies, the fundamental goal is to invest the resources into the projects that make it more competitive so that it can keep existing uh, to fulfill the higher company goal. Uh, so with uh, limited resources, choose the best survival strategy and do this in a changing environment. Uh, data analytics takes on a couple of roles within that context. Uh, the number one role I, I see is data as a signal, right? We spend X amount of hours on a task. Do we like that? Uh, data as a diagnostic tool, uh, right? Out of those 15 hours, how is that distributed over the various subtasks? Uh, should it be like that, right? And uh, where might be our potential uh, solution directions? And then there's data as a validation, right? We've changed something, now we want to know, is it better? Um, I think most companies can produce and analyze diagnostic and validation data on demand. Uh, for those projects, the focus is on the efficiency and the effectiveness of the analytical methods, right? How, uh, how much data do I need to reach an acceptable risk or confidence or trustworthiness? Uh, and am I getting the answer I need? I think that most companies with some maturity have reached this stage, but transitioning from that to the next phase is what the culture of analytics is all about, right? As a company, how do you think about signal data? Where is the data available in your process? How do you gather, store, uh, and monitor that data, and how do you drive your company strategy based on that data? Um, this can be as simple as tracking execution times in the manufacturing process, but it can be as complex as changing the product portfolio based on market sentiment analysis. I firmly believe that for a culture of analytics to emerge, you have to treat, start, uh, start treating your data like a scarce good, right? That needs to be harvested and stored. And as many more and more, uh, and as more and more of the data becomes available, you can then start looking into it and become more skilled at the analysis of it. You know, look, we're spending so much time doing, you know, X, Y, Z, or um, the quality of of what you're getting is not as, you know, good. You know, let's look at the opportunity cost um, of making this investment um, and what we're going to get. And it comes back down to money. I mean, you know, tying it back to either your operating expenses or to your revenue. Um, it really does need to come back to money and having the metrics around that to be able to support it. Here's an example. Um, so we are, you know, we're dealing with, like I mentioned before, early research physics, and uh, we're not always knowing when the physics actually work. We're, we're like, we're looking for phase transitions. Um, and so we designed this experiment, extreme, ex sorry, a screening experiment, uh, which uh, we cleverly tried uh, a high throughput testing because we had so many different uh, uh, factors to and different combinations of them or covering arrays as they are called in uh, Jump. And we basically were able to establish the working physics regime. Uh, we, we identified uh, the, the phase transitions and we found where it works. And now that we are in the working physics regime, we can actually start developing the measurement protocols for the quantitative outputs. Uh, that were uh, based on the discovered modes. And now we can actually run the DU. So if you remember in Peter's talk, he talked about the stack height of the chips as being the metrics of quality, where now we could establish one for us. Uh, now that we have a, a you know, system in a working regime, now we can make big progress optimizing this particular metric. Big progress. The second would be standardized analytics methods, which we consider an essential part of our change management process. Uh, the process prescribes the specific analytics which must be evaluated based on the change type, based on the type of data being analyzed. And no one has an excuse to skip the analyses since they've already been standardized through code, right? Dashboarding through code, which for us means jump guides. If you're gonna build a house, you're gonna wanna give hammers and nails to your carpenters. And so if you're gonna have a technology company, an operations ops type company, you're gonna need to have some software, some training, some statistics, some analytical capabilities amongst your, your technical staff and, the, and any other part of the business as well. So I think it truly can be demonstrated to pay for itself.